Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. For today's video, I thought it'd be fun to try out some new DIY techniques that I have never tried before. I'm gonna be trying eco printing as well as dyeing with natural items with things that you can find in your kitchen, which I thought would be perfect to tie in with today's video sponsor, Every Plate. I've worked with them in the past and I'm really excited to cook up another yummy meal with them just so that we could take some of those items and then use them for a DIY. DIY project and I can't wait to see how it turns out. I feel like this month I've really been trying to branch out and just learn new mediums so I hope that you guys have fun with me on this little journey of eco printing and natural dyeing and without further ado let's jump into the first project. Hello from voiceover Tina. For our first project, we're gonna try some floral imprinting so I'm using a canvas pouch but of course you can use any type of fabric item you'd like. Then I'm taking some leftover flowers that I have from an arrangement and I'm going to take the most vibrant ones for this project. To start, I'm just taking one little flower and I'm going to lay it onto my fabric facing the flower down. Then I'm cutting any of the stem off that is sticking out and I'm just going to tape it down with some masking tape. <laughs> I'm going to slip a piece of wax paper in there and I'm also going to place this right on top of a piece of wood. Then all we're doing is taking a hammer and we're just going to tap it where our flower is. And you want to make sure that you're tapping this on the entire flower, that way the natural color of the flower gets imprinted onto the fabric. After you tap your entire flower, you can go ahead and flip it again and remove your tape and you will reveal our first little flower imprint. I just think this looks so cute and as you can see, the color differs a bit from what you see on the actual flower, so each one is going to be a little bit different. I wish I had more color flowers, but this bouquet mainly had pinks and purples, so that's just what I went with for this design. So I'm basically just going to repeat this process and build my design out, and after you get it down, you can take multiple flowers at a time and tap the flowers as you go. I basically just put the flowers wherever, and I wasn't following too much of a pattern to make it look organic. This is a great way to repurpose any bouquets that you have before they start wilting, and I've also seen this technique done with leaves, so you can definitely experiment with any plants that you have around. You'll also see that I'm taking apart the flowers into petals and making new shapes with them, so you can definitely get creative with this and manipulate the flowers to create a look that you like. <laughs> With a paintbrush and some fabric paint, I'm going to do a little calligraphy and put the word create on this. If you plan on doing this with an item that needs regular washing, I would definitely recommend that you mordant it so that the colors will last longer, but since this is a pencil case that doesn't need regular washing, I skipped that extra step. <laughs> You can leave it like this for a nice watercolor effect from the flowers, but I wanted to add a bit of detail, so I went on over top with a white fabric paint to add on some fun outlines, but I still wanted to leave it very organic looking, so these definitely do not need to be perfect. And now I'm just going to let the paint dry and our pouch will be ready for use. This is such a fun way to get a beautiful organic floral look using an easy technique and I think anyone could do this. I'm glad that I was able to add in my own personal touch with some calligraphy and I just think these florals look so soft and vibrant. I love that we were able to repurpose a bouquet into something that will outlast the lifetime of a flower and this would also be such a great way to preserve any special bouquets into a DIY. Before moving on to the next project, I want to give a big thank you to Every Plate for sponsoring today's video. Let's see what I'm cooking up today. So if you're not already familiar with Every Plate, they are America's best value meal kit that gets delivered right to your door. Every Plate dinners are a cheaper and healthier alternative to takeout or delivery, and they offer over 10 chef design recipes each week from only $4.99 per serving. This week, I'm making carne asada fajitas for dinner, and you guys, I was really excited to cook this one because it had some of my favorites, pickled red onions. I learned how to make these the first time I traveled every plate, and they were just so quick and delicious to make. I'm honestly convinced that they make everything taste better. 
And that's another reason why I love every plate. I get to learn new recipes and things to cook, and that really keeps making dinner feel fresh and exciting every night. And if you really like a recipe from them, you can now order more of your favorite meals. They just introduced a double up option, so now you can select more than one meal of your choice. And as you guys know, I do work during the day and I do YouTube at night, so I really don't have much time to spare. So every plate is great because the recipes come together in about 30 minutes, which is honestly faster than going to the grocery store, which means you can spend more time cooking and enjoying dinner with your family or significant other and less time shopping and meal planning. You get all the ingredients that you need for each recipe and everything is already pre-measured, so you save food from going to waste. And not to mention, every plate is pledging to offset 100% of their carbon emissions, which is so awesome. So now it's time to enjoy our delicious meal that we just cooked, and of course, the camera had to eat first. These fajitas were delish, and I would highly recommend this recipe if you guys are choosing which meal to choose from their menu. That meal was seriously so delicious, and if you guys are interested in trying out every plate for yourself, make sure that you check out the link in my description box down below. You can use my special discount code below, and you will get three weeks of meals for only $1.99 per meal, which is just amazing. And you'll actually get an additional 20% off for two weeks after that that, so make sure that you check out the link below. So now that we have some extra food scraps from that meal, I'm gonna go ahead and take those and work on the next project. For this next project, we're gonna be creating some natural dyes, so I took the onion skin from my every plate meals this week and I saved them and then I just washed them off. So I went ahead and added them to a pan and I just filled it up with water to boil to create our natural dye. I'm gonna let that sit for about two hours, and I only have one pot, so that's why I'm using a pan here, but this would be much better with a pot so you don't continuously have to add water to it. So while that's boiling, I'm gonna create a fixative to boil our items in, and you'll need a 16 to one ratio of water to salt. I added in eight cups of water and a half cup of salt, and I just let that boil. For this project, I will be dyeing some three millimeter macrame cord, so I measured out 20 feet of it to have an ample amount. I also tried to dye this canvas tote bag, which was kind of a fail, but I will get to that later on in the video. So creating a fixative is actually gonna help our dye stick to the fabric better, and you can use a lot of other things to create a mordant to use as a fixative for your item. So I will list a few resources below, but I'm just using salt because it's already what I had in my kitchen. And I'm gonna let that sit for about an hour before removing it. So after a couple of hours of cooking our onion skins down, we're left with this rich orangey brown color. And since I only used three onions, I wanted it to be concentrated, so I really boiled it down quite a bit. And if you want more dye, I would suggest to just save your onion skins every time you're cooking so that you have more to work with. So I took all the skins out of the dye and then I put it into the pot to dye our macrame cord. And I'm just gonna let that simmer for about two hours and then I let it sit overnight to dye. And if you have any extra dye left over, you can actually go ahead and save it and use it for another project in the future. So the next day, the macrame cord absorbed a lot of the dye, so I just squeezed it and I also gave it a cold wash. So as you're washing it, you'll notice that it's gonna become a little bit lighter, so it turned into this beautiful brown color. And what's cool about natural dyes is that the color is going to vary depending on what you're using to dye it. So it's really all about experimenting when it comes to natural dyeing. After that, I'm just hanging up my cord and I'm gonna let it air dry in the sunlight. And while that's drying, I quickly wanted to talk about the canvas bag that I dyed. I tried to do a tie-dye with it, which I think actually worked to create a spiral look. But since it was a canvas tote bag, it was already this tan color, so the brown was barely visible on it. So I'm definitely going to have to try this again in the future with a white fabric and show you guys how it turns out. All right, so back to our project. Our macrame is ready to be used to create anything that you would like. And for this project, I'm gonna create a little keychain. First, I'm cutting out four pieces and I'm making each one two feet long. And for this project, I'm using these little wooden rings, but you can definitely use metal rings and half rings as well. To start, I'm folding my cord in half to create a loop and then I'm pulling the ends through, creating a cow hitch knot, AKA a lark's head knot. And we're basically just gonna repeat this to all four pieces. So now we have eight cords to work with and this piece is super simple because we are basically just going to be doing square knots for the whole thing. So working with the four cords on the left side, I'm going to go ahead and take the outermost cords and make a number four with our right cord. Then I'm taking the cord on the left and I'm bringing it over the right cord and then underneath the middle cords to go through the backwards four. Mm -hmm. 
Then you just want to take both cords and pull them up to create the first half of our square knot. I'm going to repeat that again by creating the four and looping it through to complete our square knot on this side. For the right hand side, we're basically going to repeat those same exact steps and create a square knot to finish our first row of knots. For the second row, we're going to go ahead and take the four middle cords and create another square knot and this is going to give us a nice V shape. And if you're new to macrame, I would definitely suggest watching a video on basic knots that you should know and also playback videos and watching them at a slower speed to learn. I definitely am not a pro when it comes to macrame and I'm always referring back to tutorials so I will leave a few of them in the description box down below. So now that we have our little v-shape we're basically going to repeat that and create another row of the two square knots and then another row of the one square knot below that. And like I mentioned this is the main knot that we're doing for this entire piece but creating these alternating rows is what really gives us a beautiful pattern in the end. So now that we've created our second v-shape this is going to give us a nice tapered look at the end. So I'm going to create our leftmost cord and I'm going to bring it across by creating double half hitch knots. So using this as our base cord, we're going to lay it on top of the working cord on the right hand side and create a four and then loop it around two times. So for this step, you're basically just wrapping around this main cord to create this fringe at the bottom. And I'm repeating that across until we reach the middle and then I'm going to repeat that on the right side coming in to the center. Once we get to the middle, we're going to go ahead and take the left cord as our working cord and do another half hitch knot here. So this row is complete and we can go ahead and work on our last row and basically repeat these same exact steps. So after you're done with all of your double half hitch knots, this completes all of the knots of our piece and the last thing I'm going to do is just to brush it out to create some fringe. To finish it off, I'm cutting the loose ends to create a V shape and our keychain is complete. Creating natural dyes is a great way to reuse food scraps and color existing materials for projects and I just really love this gorgeous taupey brown color that our macrame turned out. I think it looks a little more elevated than the natural color of macrame and it's just so pretty. This was seriously such a fun process to try out and I'm excited to create even more colors with different foods in the future. So those are all the projects from today's video. I'm curious to hear if you guys have tried any of those techniques out. I'm definitely still a newbie to this, so I'm really just dipping my toes in. So I'm really excited to try out these techniques on other projects. And if you guys have any other suggestions of things that I can do with natural dyeing, please let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to hearing them. And again, thank you to Every Plate for sponsoring today's video and also allowing me to cook a delicious meal. If you guys are interested in checking them out, make sure that you click on my link so that you can get three weeks of meals for only $1.99 each, which is awesome as well as an additional 20% off of two weeks after that so I will have all that info down below. If you like this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below for new videos every single week. If you haven't already make sure that you follow me on Instagram. I post on there every single day and tag me on there if you recreate any of the projects from today's video. I'll put a few of your recreations on the screen here. You guys are seriously so amazing and I'm really proud of this community that we've built so thank you so much for sharing your projects with me. Thank you guys all so much for tuning into today's video and supporting my channel. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!